Lesson 12.11, Patterns in Measurement Units. We're going to be making tables with number pairs in this lesson. We can use patterns to write number pairs for measurement units by making a table with a column for each type of unit in the pair. We can list the measurements that have the same relationship in the column by units. Then we can label each column with the name for that unit. So, you need to remember that this is a column, this is a column, and these are rows going across. So columns go up and down vertically, and rows go across horizontally. We can make a table that relates weeks and days. One week is equal to seven days. The labels for our columns are weeks and days. One week is seven days. That's one times seven. So our number pairs are one and seven. Two weeks would be 14 days. That would be two times seven days. Our number pairs would be two and 14. Three weeks is 21 days. That's three times seven days. That's 21. Our number pairs are 3 and 21. 4 weeks is 28 days. That's 4 times 7 days. We have 28 and our number pairs are 4 and 28. We can change the order of the number pairs if we also change the labels of the columns. Before, this was weeks and that was days. If we put days first and then weeks, now we have 7 days, 1 week. Our number pairs would change order. We would have a 7 and a 1, a 14 and a 2, a 21 and a 3, and a 28 and a 4. It's the same numbers. They're just in a different order because we changed the labels in the columns. Here we have three tables. So think of the customary units of length or weight we've studied. Which units could we use to label the columns in these tables? So we need to label the columns. So a hint is the first row shows the relationship. So what relationship would be 1 and then 12? And we can think, well, I know there's one year that is equal to 12 months, but it says customary units of length or weight. It doesn't say time. So can you think of a customary unit of length or a customary unit of weight that would fit 1 and 12? If you said feet and inches, you're right. 1 foot is 12 inches, so 2 feet would be 24 inches. 3 would be 36, and 4 would be 48. Now, can you think of a customary unit of length or a customary unit of weight that would fit 1 and 3? If you said yard and feet, you're right. 1 yard is equal to 3 feet, so 2 yards would be equal to 6 feet. 3 would be equal to 9 feet, and 4 would be equal to 12 feet. Now look, we have a 1 and a 2,000. Can you think of a customary unit of length or a customary unit of weight that would fit this relationship? One would be equal to 2,000 of something else. If you said ton and pounds, you got it right. One ton is equal to 2,000 pounds. So two tons would be double that. It would be 4,000. And three tons would be three times 2,000. It would be 6,000. And of course, four would be four times the 2,000 pounds. It would be 8,000 pounds. Think of the customary units of liquid volume we have studied in this chapter. Which units could we use to label the columns in these tables? So be careful. It's not time and it's not weight. It's customary units of liquid volume. We look at the first relationship, 1 and 16. Can you think of a liquid volume that would have a relationship of 1 and 16? 
If you said pint and ounce, you're right. There is one pint equal to 16 ounces. That means two pints would be double that. It would be 32 ounces. And three would be three times 16. It would be 48. And four pints would be four times 16. It would be 64 ounces. Now look at this one. It's a customary unit of liquid volume, one and four. Can you think of one of something that would be equal to four of something else? If you said gallon and quart, you're right. One gallon is equal to four quarts. So two gallons would be two times four. Three gallons would be three times four. And four gallons would be four times four. Now we have a one and a two. Can you think of some liquid volume that would fit one and two? One of something is equal to two of something else. There's actually several answer, answers for this table. We could say one pint is two cups. We could say one quart is two pints. We could even say one half gallon is two quarts. Because the metric system is based on tens, we could use several metric units to label these tables. We have a 1 and a 10, a 2 and a 20, a 3 and a 30. This could be 1 centimeter is 10 millimeters. We could even say it's 1 meter is 10 decimeters. We could say 1 decimeter is 10 centimeters. Any of these will fit because of base 10. And here we have 1 and 100. We could say 1 meter is 100 centimeters. We could say 1 decimeter is 100 millimeters. Then that means 2 would be 200, 3 would be 300. So actually, the metric system is easier to use because it's based on the number 10. And we can see the relationship between the numbers in each pair. We have years and months. One year is equal to 12 months. So two years is 24 months and three years is 36 months. And if you look at the months, these are multiples of 12. The second number, the 12, 24, or 36 in each pair is 12 times greater than the first number. They're multiples of 12. And for the metric system, we have decimeter and centimeter. One decimeter is 10 centimeters, so two would be two tens, it would be 20. And three would be three tens, it would be 30. These are all multiples of 10. The second number is 10 times greater than the first number. We need to complete the tables with the correct number pairs. We have Pints and cups, one pint is equal to two cups. So two pints would be equal to how many cups? If you said four, you're right. If one of them is two cups, then two of them would be two times two. It would be four. Do you know what three pints would be equal to? If you said six, you're right we would do three times two. Here's some metric. We have liters and milliliters. One liter is 1,000 milliliters. So do you know what two liters would be? If you said 2,000, you're right. So do you know what three liters would be in milliliters? If you said 3,000, you're right. We would do 3 times 1,000, which is 3,000. For pints and cups, we have multiples of 2, 2, 4, 6. And for the liters and milliliters, we have multiples of 1,000, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Emma made a table to relate two units of time. Her number pairs were 1 and 60, 2 and 120, 3 and 180, and 4 and 240. 
What could she have written as the labels of her columns? So think what relates as 1 and 60. She could have written hour and minutes as her labels. She also could have written minutes and seconds because they both relate 1 and 60. One hour is equal to 60 minutes. One minute is equal to 60 seconds. So either one of those would work. Which units of time could we use to label these tables? So notice it says units of time. So that's a clue to what we can use here. We have a 1 and a 365. Do you know what we could have one of that would be 365 of something else? Well, there's 365 days in a year. So we could label this years and this column days. Two would be two times 365. It would be 730. Three years would be three times 365, and four years would be four times 365. Now look at this table. One of something is 52 of something else. Can you think of units of time that would fit these number pairs? There are 52 weeks in one year, so we can write years and weeks. One year is 52 weeks, so two years would be two times 52. It would be 104 weeks. Three would be three times 52. It would be 156 weeks. And four would be four times 52. It would be 208 weeks. We need to match these to these. We need to find the relationship. We have one minute, one hour, one day, one week, one year. And look, we have another one year and another one year. Usually when I do these, I look at the ones that I know the quickest and the easiest. So I don't necessarily start with the first one. I do if it's easy. We know one minute is 60 seconds. We could say one minute is 60 times greater than one second. Now we have one hour. Well, I know one hour is 60 minutes. We can match one hour to 60 times greater than a minute. Here we have one day, we have one week. Look, seven times greater than one day. So we could do one week is seven times greater than one day. One day, well, let's think. There's 365 days in a year, but one day would not be 365 times greater than one day. That wouldn't make sense. Look, here we have 24 times greater than one hour. I know there's 24 hours in one day, so one day is 24 times greater than one hour. We have one year, we have it three times, so we know that these must be the one years. One year is 52 times greater than one week because there's 52 weeks in a year. We can match that one. One year is 365 times greater than one day. That makes sense because there's 365 days in a year. And one year can be 12 times greater than one month because there's 12 months in one year. So try to remember the relationships between the times, how many minutes are in an hour, how many seconds are in a minute, how many days are in a week, how many days are in a year, and so on. If you're having trouble remembering the different units of measurements, use a chart or a table to help you from your book or from your notes. Remember that columns go vertically up and down and rows go across horizontally. And 
make sure to label them correctly so your relationship is correct for the number pairs. Our next lesson is going to start chapter 13. We're going to learn about perimeter and area. And in 13.1, we'll start with perimeter. Have a wonderful day. Keep trying hard. I'm so proud of you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.